past few months, we've seen them try to regulate everything from our state water to our personal retirement funds. Now the Biden administration wants to control which cars Americans are able to drive. Last week, the Environmental Protection Agency issued new regulations cracking down on vehicle emissions. These new standards make it harder for people to drive gas-powered cars in an attempt to coerce Americans into purchasing new electric vehicles, or EVs, vehicles that cost about as much as the average family makes in a year. These regulations are part of a so-called emissions plan. But there's nothing realistic about what the Biden administration is trying to do. The administration says it wants 67 percent of the cars in this country to be electric by 2032, just nine years from now. Last year, EVs only accounted for 6 percent of new car sales. And the International Energy Agency predicts that by 2030, EVs will only make up 15 percent of the vehicles in our country. We need to tell it like it is. The White House's plan is based on the speculative wish that EVs will make an inconceivable jump from a tiny fraction of our vehicles to the majority of them in less than a decade. This so-called plan is really a pipe dream, and the facts show that the EPA's goals are highly unlikely, if not impossible. The administration is using its imagination to try and create a world that real Americans don't even want. And in the process, it's ignoring the many complexities at play when it comes to electric vehicles. Let's talk about some of those complexities. Electric vehicles rely on the electric power grid and a massive increase in EV use like the Biden administration wants, could cause serious issues with the grid. During a heat wave last September, power authorities in California had to ask residents to avoid charging their electric cars in the evenings for fear that the power grid would malfunction from being overwhelmed. Will Social Security recipients see another benefit increase this year? New data has just been released on the cost of living adjustment and how it is affecting recipients' finances and the economy. Several lawmakers have shown their support for even more extra benefits for seniors and retirees. So the question is, how much will this increase be? Please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to hear about all of the details. Also, this coming Friday, I will be announcing several more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, my friends, of winning the giveaways. Over the last couple of years, Prices for nearly everything have increased, and in many cases, the prices for everything have skyrocketed. This has been especially problematic for retirees who are living on fixed incomes. So when Social Security announced a cost of living adjustment of 8.7% for 2023, seniors across the United States breathe a small sigh of relief. After all, it was the biggest benefit increase in more than four decades. But is the 8.7% Social Security COLA adequate? Retirees don't seem to feel that the Social Security COLA is enough. That was the case when the Senior Citizens League conducted a survey earlier this year. A whopping 96% of people surveyed didn't think that the COLA would be enough to help them catch up from the impact of inflation in recent years. Over 50% of survey respondents said that their household costs last year increased by more than the 8.7% COLA that went into effect this year. That COLA amount was calculated using inflation numbers 
from the third quarter of 2022. The SSA uses the CPIW to determine annual COLAs. Here is how the CPIW has increased year over year in the first three months of 2023. None of the CPIW year over year increases in the first three months of 2023. We're above the 8.7% COLA. Also, inflation appears to be moderating. There is some new data that potentially supports the view that the big Social Security increase is helping some seniors stay ahead of inflation. In March, Bank of America reported faster spending growth for older Americans than any other age group. They also found evidence in its data. That households that receive Social Security benefits have increased their spending more than those that do not. The financial services giant concluded that the 8.7% COLA is a likely factor behind the significant increase in spending. Mary Johnson, the Senior Citizens League policy analyst, calculated the Social Security benefit increase that's required to keep up with inflation between January 2020. And December 2022. She found that the actual benefits were, on average, roughly $1,054 below what was needed. Unfortunately, retirees should not grow too accustomed to big annual benefit increases. Based on the current inflation trends, the 2024 COLA will likely be much smaller than the adjustments received in the past few years. Some policy experts favor an alternative measure of inflation, known as a consumer price index for the elderly, which is based on spending patterns of individuals aged 62 years and older. The CPIE uses the same eight spending categories as the CPIW, but their weighting varies based on the relative importance to the underlying population. Not surprisingly, many lawmakers. Have proposed legislation that would use the CPIE rather than the CPIW to calculate Social Security COLAs. In fact, Senator Bernie Sanders and nine Democratic co-sponsors reintroduced the Social Security Expansion Act in Congress. The bill proposes nine major changes to the Social Security program, most of which focuses on boosting revenue. To avoid trust fund depletion, but the Social Security Expansion Act also proposes replacing the CPIW with the CPIE in December 2025. Social Security's annual colas would be about 0.2 percentage points higher if they were based on the CPIE instead of the CPIW. That may sound insignificant. But compounding can turn small numbers into big numbers over long periods of time. Well, my marvelous and most magnificent friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you, dear friends, for being part of this community and for being here every single day. To show my appreciation, I will be announcing more winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. This coming Friday, if you would like to enter the giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the key word of each video that you watch. My friends, the more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways.